Millions of people come from all over the world to visit San Francisco. And what is one of the first things they all want to do? Joyride on public transportation. And it's no wonder. The city by the bay has some of the world's most historic and unique transit systems. We start with one of the most recognizable symbols of San Francisco. The cable car. Visitors often make the mistake of calling these trolleys. But we're taking you behind the scenes to show you exactly why this is incorrect and how these cars navigate some of the steepest hills in any major city, even though they don't have engines. To learn what enables these cars to tackle the steep grades, we hop aboard in Fisherman's Wharf and head uphill. As I mentioned earlier, these cars travel around the city with no engine on board. But there is an engine somewhere. And it's located in this building. I was curious, so I hopped off here at the powerhouse to go inside and learn more. The Cable Car Museum is located inside the Washington Mason Powerhouse. Although this building is now a free museum housing historic equipment, mechanical devices, and other exhibits, it is first and foremost tasked with powering all four cable car lines. The cars themselves have batteries to power the lights, but they are transported throughout the city by cables that run underneath the streets. Here's how it works. The cables enter the building and run through these sheaves below street level. Then, the cable moves out to the winding machine where the driving sheave actually pulls the cable and provides the power. These massive machines were once powered by steam engines, but are now electric. After running through these tension sheaves, which keep the lines tight, and gear reducers, they run back out of the building and underneath the tracks on the street. If you stand next to one of these tracks, you can always hear the cable whirring away underground. The cars themselves use a grip just like this one, that grabs a hold of the cable, which runs at a constant speed of about nine and a half miles per hour. As the car's grip squeezes the cable with varying intensity, the cable accelerates the car and helps it maintain a constant controlled speed, even when traveling down a large hill. There is a cable running through the powerhouse for each of the four cable car lines that exist today. In its heyday, there used to be many more lines running throughout the city. The 1906 Great Earthquake and Fire devastated much of the system, and a lot of it was never rebuilt. We hop back aboard a cable car and continue to the end of the line. There, operators have to manually turn the cars on a turntable to prepare them for the return trip. The cars that run along California Street are double-ended, so it is the only one of the four lines that doesn't require this labor-intensive turning procedure. Back down at water level, we are in the perfect place to check out yet another one of San Francisco's legendary rail systems. The historic fleet of PCC streetcars. This streamlined design is often regarded as the most successful type of streetcar in American history. It operated in 32 other cities throughout the early part of the 20th century. PCC stands for President's Conference Committee, the name of the group tasked with designing the cars. They wanted to create something streamlined, smoother running, and improve on the look of the boxy streetcars running through American cities at the time. These refurbished streetcars are painted in tribute paint schemes to reflect many of the cities in which these cars ran. And they still run today down the Embarcadero. In order to film for this episode, I traveled from the East Coast aboard Amtrak's California Zephyr. Next, watch this video to see more about my adventure. Please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching Rail Weekly.